This is a brief demonstration of digitizing in ArcMap 10.1. This is a, a common scenario where you want to be able to create a GIS feature, um, whether it's a point, a line, or a polygon, from some existing data. So in this case, I've loaded um, a online base map, which is the Bing aerial photos, but this could be lots of different things. It could be a topographic base map. It could be a scan of an image of a, it could be an air photo or an image of a, an old historical map. But the, the point is with the, the original version of the data like this, you don't have anything you can click on, you can't add attributes, it's just a picture of something. And what we're going to do is create a feature from this by tracing on it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have our editor and snapping toolbars added to ArcMap. So uh, in this case, I've done this already, but you can do it from the customize toolbars menu and then you would just select uh, those two toolbars so editor and snapping um, once you have those then we have to create a feature class in which we can place the new features that we're going to create so I'm going to go to my file geo database here right click and select a new feature class um, so give it a name you don't have to give it an alias. And then in ArcGIS, you have to tell it which type of feature you want to create, point, line, polygon, and so on, because you can't have these in the same feature class. So we'll create some points. Click Next. Uh, I'm going to use the UTM um, coordinate system that's appropriate for this area. This is uh, High Park in Toronto, so UTM uh, Zone 17N. Click Next. I'll go with the default XY tolerance, which in this case is one thousandth of a meter, which is great. And I'll go with the default configuration keyword. And here's where you can add uh, extra attributes if you like. So in this case, I could add, I'll just click on it, give the attribute a name. So that'll be the name of the field or the column that'll be added to the table and I'll go with the default which happens to be text with a length of 50 characters. I'll select finish and this will create a new feature class that I can then use for digitizing. Okay, so now I have got my empty feature class for trees. I can go to the editor toolbar and select start editing and that then activates uh, many of the features available in the editor toolbar and one thing that may not be obvious at first glance is that uh, we need to activate uh, the create features pane which is the last icon on the right in the toolbar so if I click on that this creates uh, or opens up a new pane called create features and you'll notice that it's already um, selected trees as my feature class and then below that we have construction tools so we can create a new point or uh, create a point at the end of a line so I could then if I like let's do this I can go over and um, change the symbology for my trees so uh, let's say I want to I'll search for tree here and go down and search for let's see this looks like a good symbol so I'll use that say OK and so with this selected um, for my points I can then if you'll notice that uh, as I drag this around I hope you can see this in the recording it's actually showing where that symbol would be created so if I wanted to digitize some of these trees I can just click where I want to place it like so and a point is created with the symbology that I've predetermined so here's my little tree canopy and I can do this as many times as I want. And if I like, as I'm editing, if I go and select the attribute pane, I can add the attribute while I'm digitizing. So in this case, this is my third tree. I can click in the, the null area here, <coughs> here and then type in my attributes. So in this case, uh, I could put in, say, the, the type of tree, such as maple hit enter and now that attribute when I save it 
will be saved uh, with the point that's uh, associated with it. So I can continue to do this all day long. I could add another one. Um, if I wanted, I could give that a name as well. So let's say that this is going to be, uh, let's say a walnut tree. And so on. Okay, that's basically it. So uh, once you're done, you have to go back to the editor toolbar and say you can just save edits if you want to save them as you go. Or if you're done, you can say stop editing. And if you haven't saved your edits, it will ask you if you want to save them at that point. So now I have a new feature class with my trees uh, created inside it. And remember that these uh, points are actually infinitely small. They don't have the actual outline of that symbol. I just chose that symbol. If I changed it to something else, it would have a different size or whatever. So um, now I have my points. So now if I wanted to, I can create some lines. So I'll create another feature class for some lines. I'm just going to show you lines and polygons. So here, let's call these paths. These are going to be line features. I'll use the same coordinate system as before, all the same settings. And I won't bother with an attribute here. So now when I'm creating my lines, the main thing that you have to remember is, or to think about is to what the sampling frequency is that you're going to use for these. In other words, these paths are all curved. How am I going to uh, approximate the, the curve or the shape of each of these objects? So I'll go back and start editing here and I'll select the Create Features um, pane and you'll notice that my trees are still there but I'm now going to select Paths and it's the construction tool I'm going to use is just a line and I'm going to then start my line um, wherever I want that line segment to begin. like so. And then you essentially just click to create a vertex, which is a point at which the line changes direction. And so I could go on like this. And like I said, you have to decide how many vertices you want to use to describe that line. Here I've got a few. I'm doing a reasonably decent job. And then when you get to the end of the line segment that you want to create, you can double click um, to finish that line segment. Okay, um, I could do more of these, but essentially it's the same process. Uh, if I wanted to, I could snap to an existing line. Whoops. Uh, so, or I could edit a vertices or a vertex. So if I, uh, for example, zoom in here and say that, hmm, that line isn't exactly where I wanted it, I could select edit vertices on this um, toolbar and then I can for example move a vertex to a new location and say uh, finish sketch and it will actually move that. I could then also do things like add a vertex using the edit vertices toolbar here that pops up so if I click add a vertex and then click on the line that creates a new vertex so that gives me a new place where I can then change the direction of that line. So I could drag that new vertex and then say finish sketch. And so now I've, I can, so I can move existing vertices, I can add a vertex, I can delete one. And this gives you some fine tuning control over the placement of particular objects on your line. All right, so I'll say stop editing and it will ask me if I want to save them, I'll say yes. And we'll zoom out again. And so there is my existing path. We'll just make it a little more visible here. So that's the, the path that I digitized. Lastly, we're going to create a polygon. So I'll create yet another feature class. And this will be, we'll just call this park. 
and it's already set to polygon features. I'll say next, use the same settings as my other ones. And finish. And now I will be able to create uh, park polygons. So these might be within each path. If I'm using the path to describe the boundary of each of these park polygons, um, I can say start editing. And I will change my park polygon to, let's say, this nice green here. And I've selected that for editing. And so now I can create a polygon using that construction tool. So for example, I could, in exactly the same way that I'm tracing features for a line, I'm doing the same thing for a polygon. I decide what my sampling frequency is going to be. I'm going to use a little bit of detail here. And you'll notice that it's, this is called rubber banding, is that it's, it's showing me that I have to finish a polygon. So I'll continue this. So in other words, I couldn't turn this into a line if I wanted to. And I can then, if I'm getting close to where I started, and I want to close the polygon or, or have it finish at the same place that I started, I just right click and say finish sketch. And now I have a new polygon feature. And there we go. Um, if I wanted to trace an existing feature, so let's say that I wanted the boundary of my polygon to exactly match the path that I digitized as a line, then I can do that as well. So if I select my parks to modify, and I'm going to um, save my edits there. And so now I'm going to digitize a new feature. Uh, let's see now. I'm going to take my park and I'm going to select from the toolbar this drop down here. You'll notice there's a few different options for editing and if you uh, mouse over them it'll describe which each one is and so in this case for example I'm going to use the trace tool which is very handy. So now when I'm creating my new polygon what I'll do is I'll select the trace feature and you'll notice um, that as I get close to an existing feature it will snap to the that feature so I'm going to snap or click at the start of that existing path uh, line and then if I drag the cursor along that existing feature it will highlight it and let me know that it's going to actually trace that so I don't actually have to try and click along every single existing vertex and try to get them to be exactly the same I can just trace along it, and when I get to the end of it I just click and so it automatically creates uh, matching line segments and vertices to the existing line feature so that they're exactly the same which is a really handy thing to be able to to know about and so from then on since I don't have any more paths I can continue on by tracing oh, if I, uh, I have to get rid of the trace tool now and just go back to using straight segments and so now I can continue on digitizing the rest of this feature that way and so if I just went around and stayed here I'm doing a not great job here and then I'll finish the sketch and so now I have a second feature that's exactly traced along an existing line segment. So that's essentially uh, the basics of creating points, lines, and polygons. Um, it's not particularly difficult, but in ArcMap, it's not always that intuitive when you're first starting out. So remember to open the Create Features pane, um, optionally the Attribute pane as well, and then um, you can start tracing features using the various uh, construction tools that are available. You can change the symbology as you go or do it afterwards. There's lots of context menus, so essentially if you're right-clicking as you go, you can um, change different options in terms of offsets, things like that, which you can explore and play with. So hopefully that's enough to get you started.